I know a lot of Albertans who love BC wine. Quite frankly, I'm one of them. Just like I know a lot of British Columbians who love to drive their cars, fly in planes, and heat their homes using Alberta energy products. It's not the government's uh, intention to respond in any way to the provocation. We're going to focus on the issues that matter to British Columbians and hope that cooler heads on the other side of the uh, Rockies will prevail. Well, it's Alberta oil versus BC wine, a provincial conflict with national consequences triggered by proposed regulations that would block shipments of oil sands bitumen to the West Coast. Enter Premier Rachel Notley scolding her NDP counterpart, the Premier of BC, for overstepping provincial authority and threatening court action. And then she's banned BC wine. There could be more. A terse message in a bottle for BC to back off and for Ottawa to step in. If there is an attempt by any government to infringe on federal jurisdiction in the national interest, then the government of Canada will intervene. So how far does this go? Well, to find out, we begin today with a special scrum. CTV's Mercedes Stevenson joins us. Global Mail Bureau Chief in Ottawa, Bob Fife is here. CTV's Chief Political Commentator, Craig Oliver, of course, is here. And our special guest today is the former BC Premier, Christy Clark. She joins us from Toronto. Great to have all of you here. And Christy Clark, great to have you back on the program. Let's just start with it. Do you agree with how the BC Premier, Horgan, has handled this and what Rachel Notley has done? Well, first of all, I, I mean, I think he's breaking the law. I think he is doing something unconstitutional. Alberta and British Columbia have been the best of friends in Canada for a long, long time, and I don't think you attack your friends. But most importantly, we need to get our resources to market in Asia, and all the people in John Horgan's cabinet who think you're going to shut down the oil sands because we're not shipping it to Asia are missing the point. The oil sands are still going to operate. They are continuing to flow oil, but they're selling it to the Americans. The Americans are making the profit, and Canadians are losing out. All right, I just want to be clear here. You're saying John Horgan, the B.C. Premier, is breaking the law by saying he will not support the uh, Kinder Morgan pipeline. Well, there are rules. It's been approved. It's been properly approved. And, I, you know, provinces have an important role to play, and I set, I set the five conditions up. But that was a, those were markers that needed to be met in order for the project to get to yes. And what he's doing is trying to set up a system where it cannot get to yes and deliberately frustrating, frustrating it so that it will, the project will get cancelled. He doesn't have the constitutional right to do that. So, you know, it's terrible for BC wine growers and Alberta wine drinkers. But Rachel Notley, I think, has a, you know, has, is in the right in this. We, British Columbia doesn't have the right, the courts have said so, the Constitution says so, to stop Alberta's oil getting to market just because they don't feel like they want to let it get there. Bob, if, if Christy Clark's right, then the ball goes directly into Justin Trudeau's court. I think it's incumbent upon the government to say, here's the steps that we're going to take to make sure this pipeline is built. It's been silence on them on that part. Uh, Craig, they've got new rules. They don't apply to the Kinder Morgan pipeline, but the Minister of the Environment, the Prime Minister, and the Minister of Natural Resources, they all say, we support this pipeline that's at the heart of this dispute. And yet we haven't seen any real movement yet. Uh, well, no, but let's talk about those new rules that you're going to be asking. I, I think that uh, they have loaded the dice. I think they've loaded the dice in favor of people who are opposed to natural resource development in a major way. Uh, and that, look at the list now. They've added all kinds of new groups who have to be consulted. Indigenous people are right at the top of the line. Even more serious consultation and consent from them. So many opponents now lined up against uh, developers that, and, with, and these are opponents who have very serious, influential uh, positions with, uh, with the public. Uh, they're persuasive. I think it's pretty hard for anybody to win a development against them anymore. But, Mercedes, the whole point, and we'll ask Catherine McKenna, the whole point, she says, this is better process, a faster process, a more comprehensive process. This is going to bring certainty to get natural resources to market. 
I will be astounded if it is a faster process, given exactly what Craig is bringing up, that there are groups that are clearly opposed to these pipelines that have to be consulted. What happens when they say no? How do you speed that process through? And for a province that has taken hit after hit when it comes to oil prices, trying to get their oil to market, they're incredibly frustrated. And I don't think there's a feeling among any of the oil producers or people working in these oil fields that this is going to speed it up or make it easier. Chris, Christy Clark, where are you on the, on the new rules that uh, the government just announced? Well, I think the old rules were pretty flawed when you've got a project like Kinder Morgan that's taken this long to get approved and still isn't getting approved. I, I, you know, rather than saying I think we need a new process that could take a lot longer, what they need to be doing is figuring out how to make the existing process shorter and more efficient. Because here's, you know, we look around the world, you look at a company like Shell, for example, heavily invested in the oil sands and in British Columbia in the peace, peace country for gas. They've got investments all over the world that they're weighing these investments against. If we want to attract those jobs to our country and those tax dollars for our health care system, we've got to be able to say to those folks, we are competitive with other places in the world. Yes, we have the highest environmental standards. Yes, we have the highest worker safety standards. Yes, we have the highest wages. We're proud of that. But if you invest here, we're going to make sure we find a way so, to make your projects work. And I don't think these changes are going to do that. So you don't like the changes. All right. That brings us, by the way, to another big issue. And, you know, Christy Clark was a big part of this when they priced carbon in B.C. That was the only place where they had a carbon tax when, when she was here. Bob. Now you've got Ontario, the, the PC, the, the race to be the progressive conservative leader of Ontario has heated up. Carol Mulroney, big name, she says, I'm against uh, any kind of price on carbon. Doug Ford, he's against it. Christine Elliott, the three big candidates, they're all against it. Where, where does Justin Trudeau and the carbon price <laughs> go if conservatives are starting to line up against it? Well, look at liberal provinces in, uh, in the Maritimes, Atlantic Canada. They're not even... Uh, implementing this carbon tax that, that the government says they have to uh, and they're not going after them Ontario uh, and the conservatives have a very good chance of winning this if they if they don't if they opt out of a carbon tax the government's whole program is going to fall down and I yeah. and and are they willing is, is Mr. Trudeau willing to do what his father did and get into a big fight with the provinces over a carbon tax right. I mean if you know, you've got Jason Kenney coming on the show later on, and if he put, he's going to kill a carbon tax, so we're going to see federal provincial fighting like you've never seen before, except right. back when yeah, well, Mr. Right. Trudeau was there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the economic arguments are so persuasive, but they're, they're not turning anything in particular around. And if Kendall Morgan goes down, everything is tied to it. Yeah. The future of three mm -hmm. political leaders, the carbon yeah. tax, the accord on climate, all of it's tied there. Last word on that one, Christy Clark. Well, Evan, I would say, you know, if the, if the Prime Minister wants to get into a fight with premiers, the one worth getting into is the one over Kinder Morgan. And that's, you know, the federal government has the ability to scoop all the approvals and make this happen and do it for the good of the country, for our health care system, for all the jobs that would be created. If he wants, I mean, he's going to be in a fight either way. That's the fight right. I think they should pick, and I think it's one that they would win on behalf of all Canadians. This is a time, it's a time for courage um, on the part of political leaders. Before I let you go, because of your experience in politics, look, you know, you're not in politics right now, Krista Clark, but this Me Too movement... Not in politics ever again, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> I never say never again. Let's just, let's just hang on with that. But listen, uh, this Me Too movement and uh, sexual harassment issues have has now afflicted every single party and in provinces the federal government i mean as you of course a long time uh politician does this stuff resonate with you are you saying finally the justice is done or are things moving too far where are you on this both i couldn't be happier about it i think it's fantastic that Women can have a chance to make their voices heard because this stuff happens all the time. I can't, I don't know a single woman to whom this hasn't happened. But on the other hand, though, I think we do have to be really careful that it doesn't go too far. You can't, you know, I heard Jagmeet Singh say that the, uh, the presumption of, of innocence was the purview of the courts and the courts alone. I don't think we want to live in a society like that. So I think you want to find the balance. But my challenge to political parties is this. I think they should all work a lot harder to make sure half their candidates are women because one of the things we know for sure 
is that when there are women in the room making decisions, that sexual harassment, inappropriate behavior is just far less likely to occur, right. and why not? We're half the population. Make us half the decision makers. Well, absolutely. Uh, Chris Scott, great to have you. And by the way, as a former broadcaster, what a segue. Jagmeet Singh will join us on this program later, but the Scrum will also be back. So great thanks to Christy Clark and Mercedes Stevenson, Bob Fife and Craig Oliver.